Okay, so um, it's a pleasure uh, to have uh, Junyan Cao uh, as a speaker in the AGA seminar. So he will talk about uh, on the Ozawa uh, Takikoshi extension uh, theorem. Please. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. Uh, uh, so today I would like to talk a joint work with Mihai Pan uh, about the Ozawa Takikoshi extension theorem. Um, uh, in the case of one the sub variety is singular. Um, yeah. Um, so to to begin with, uh, so to begin with, uh, uh, so in to begin with, I would like to first explain a little bit of the motivation of our work. Uh, um, um, in this talk, uh, we always suppose that X is a projective manner for the for simplicity, and uh, uh, and uh, K X is a canonical bundle of X. Uh, um, so I think that for most of our results can be generalized to the case of uh, one X is uh, uh, weakly pseudo convex. Uh, but for simplicity, I just assume that X is projective. Um, now let Y to be a simple normal crossing divisor in X um, uh, and uh, let OY to be the holomorphic line bundle associated to it. Uh, now, and moreover, we fix a smooth Hermitian matrix uh, HY um, on OY. Uh, so we should precise that uh, here HY is a smooth matrix. Now, uh, now, uh, now the third element is a holomorphic line bundle. We fix a holomorphic line bundle on X with a possible singular matrix HL. So for HL, it might be it might be singular. Um, we fix a holomorphic line bundle. Uh, such that it uh, satisfies certain curvature conditions, which we'll precise later. And uh, now there is a, a natural question. Uh, once uh, we're given a holomorphic section on the sub, uh, on the sub variety Y for this line bundle, the first question here to ask uh, whether we can find the uh, extension to the total space. Another question is that uh, if the first condition holds, uh, uh, if uh, if for the first question holds, uh, so could we, we could, could we extend the uh, could we control the norm of f or not? Um, as for these two questions, uh, uh, it's totally solved in the case one y is smooth, so that's uh, essentially the uh, Osawa Takikoshi extension theorem. What uh, what uh, I would like to explain in the case uh, one y is smooth. Uh, so in this case, it's in fact uh, uh, it's in fact the Osawa-Takeshi type extension theorem. Um, so for the original version, it's the local version, which uh, states as follows: uh, uh, Let uh, omega to be a bound uh, to be a bounded uh, uh, pseudo convex domain in C n. Uh, if you if you like, you can just uh, take omega to be a poly disk in C n. And now let H to be an affine subspace in CN. And uh, we fix uh, a PSH function, which means that uh, phi is uh, approximately continuous. And uh, the restriction on any complex lines is subharmonic function. Say in this case, uh, uh, say in this case uh, for any uh, holomorphic function um, on the subvariety, H intersect with omega with the control on its L2 norm. Then in this case, we can find uh, an extension such that uh, we have a control on its L2 norm. So for the, uh, so for the L2 norm uh, of uh, big F, we is controlled by some uniform constant uh, times the L2 norm of the small f. So here I would like to precise that uh, for the constant C here, it's uh, in fact independent of the choice. Uh, it's, in fact, it's in fact independent of the choice of phi and f and small f. Uh, so for this, uh, 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 so for this one, it's the local version of the Osati Bosch extension theorem. Um, and uh, and for F, uh, and for its applications uh, in complex geometry, uh, we need uh, some global version. So, uh, so in fact, uh, for this theorem, there is a lot of uh, generalizations. Uh, so here, for simplicity, I just mentioned um, a very simple global version, which essentially due to Lohmann develop. Um, so for simplicity, I always assume that X is projective, but uh, in fact, uh, but uh, but in fact, 
the setting here can be much more more general. Um, and uh, we suppose that for the line bundle, it uh, satisfied the following two curvature conditions. The first one is that its curvature is semi-positive in the sense of current. So I well, um, so I will I would like to recall that for the HDR, it might be a singular matrix. Uh, so for example, once uh, L is a pseudo effective line bundle, say in this case, we can always uh, find the a possible singular matrix such that its curvature is semi-positive. So in fact, uh, uh, so in fact, uh, for for the first uh, condition, it's equivalent to say that uh, L is pseudo effective, and uh, the uh, in this case we can find the matrix such that it's semi-positive in sense of And also for the another uh, for the second condition, it's the cru crucial condition here. We need to ask us that uh, for the curvature of L with respect to this uh, possible singular matrix is. Uh, it is larger than it's larger than delta times uh, the curvature of uh, of of uh, oy. We recall that uh, for the matrix hy here, we suppose that it's a smooth matrix. It's a smooth matrix. Uh, we assume that uh, for this matrix, it satisfies these two conditions for some uh, so for uh, some constant delta, which is straight and positive. Say in this case, uh, um, say in this case, uh, for any section on the several variety, we suppose that Y is smooth, um, uh, such that uh, its L2 norm is bounded. So here I would like to explain a little bit of the notation. Um, omega X is a kind of metric on X, so therefore it induces, uh, so therefore omega X induces a Hermitian metric on the canonical bundle KX. Uh, so therefore, we know that uh, for the triple here, uh, it's uh, well defined, uh, and uh, so for this one is yes, uh, a positive uh, function, and uh, so therefore we can uh, talk about uh, its integral. Um, we suppose that uh, for this uh, section, its L two norm is bounded. Saying in this case, uh, we can find the. Uh, saying in this case, we can find the an extension, such that its L two norm is controlled by constant times uh, this L2 norm. So here, I would like to explain a little bit of notation. Um, uh, for the F here, it takes values in Kx plus L plus Y. So therefore, once uh, we evaluate it uh, with respect to the matrix of HL and HY, we know that for this term, it's a volume form. For this term, it's a volume form. So therefore, uh, so therefore, uh, so therefore, the integral is well defined, and uh, for the right hand side, uh, for the right hand side, uh, uh, sy is uh, is the canonical section of oy, which means that it's vanish on y, and uh, we need also add the normalization condition that uh, for its uh, c zero norm is controlled by the constant which depends on delta. Saying so this case, uh, um, saying so this case for the quotient here. It's well defined over y, and by the canonical formula, we know that for the quotient here, it takes values in k y plus l. So therefore, uh, so therefore, once we evaluate over h l, it's a volume form over y. So therefore, uh, so therefore, for this integral is well defined. For this integral is well defined, and uh, so the theorem says that once we have uh, says that once, uh, uh, once for this L2 norm is bounded, so therefore we can find an extension such that its L2 norm is bounded by this term. And uh, before passing to the next uh, uh, slide, I would uh, just uh, mention that uh, uh, in the case of one, y is smooth. Uh, one, in the case of one, y is smooth. Uh, uh, if, uh, in the case of one, y is smooth, uh, for these two integrals, uh, for, this, for these two integrals, uh, uh, for these two L2 norm, they are equivalent. But in the case of one, y is uh, simple normal crossing, but uh, not uh, smooth. Uh, in fact, we can check that uh, for these uh, two norms, uh, they are not equivalent. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, in, uh, in fact, uh, in extension theorem, under the assumption that uh, for this uh, integral is yes, finite. Uh, uh, we can find we can always find uh, an extension, even in the case why one y is uh, not uh, smooth. But in general, for applications, so we can only assume that uh, this L two norm is finite. 
uh, for applications, uh, uh, for most applications, uh, if Y is not a smooth uh, sample for this norm, it's not a necessary finite. Uh, for this point, I will explain it uh, later. Yeah, uh, so, that's the, uh, so, uh, so that's the theorem of uh, the Hermann Nivella uh, in, um, uh, in the case of one Y is smooth. Okay, um, uh, uh, so, uh, so for the orthotical extension theorem, even in the case of one Y is smooth, it has a lot of applications. For example, the Mali use uh, the, uh, for example, the Mali use the local version of, of, of extension theorem to prove that uh, any positive current can be approximated by the currents with the analytic singularities. And uh, uh, so he, um, and the so he proved the invariance of blue genera in the projective case by using orthotical extension theorem. And uh, there is a simple proof by Mihai Pond. The, they proved the uh, um, orthotical extension theorem with uh, uh, with uh, op, uh, with optimal uh, with uh, with optimal constant, uh, and by using their optimal extension theorem, they uh, for, um, by using their optimal extension theorem, uh, it uh, could uh, imply the positivity of their images. Um, and uh, more recently, Deng Wang Zhangzhou, uh, they just uh, used the standard orthotical extension theorem without optimal um, extension to prove the positivity of their images. So there are a lot of applications. Uh, so here I just uh, mentioned three applications. Um, um, now, uh, now in our talk, uh, we want. Uh, now, in our talk, we would uh, in fact interested in the case of one Y is not a smooth. Um, um, uh, in fact, of, uh, in, uh, in fact, uh, uh, for the main motivation uh, uh, is related to the abundance conjecture. We recall that uh, for the abundance conjecture, it uh, states as follows. Uh, uh, once X is a projective manifold, and uh, we suppose that the KX is numerically effective, that means that uh, its intersection with any projective curves is uh, semi-positive. So in this case, uh, the conjecture state uh, predicted that uh, Kx is semi-ample. That means that uh, we can find uh, a vibration uh, such that uh, the Kx is just uh, the pullback of some ample lambda uh, from base. So for this conjecture, it, it's still largely open when the dimension is larger than four. Um, um, so, uh, um, um, uh, so it's known that, uh, uh, so it's known that uh, for, uh, so it's known that uh, to prove the abundance conjecture, there is one strategy, uh, there is one strategy to prove the abundance conjecture, is to first uh, prove that, uh, is uh, first uh, to prove that uh, Kx is co-effective. And that the second step is to prove the following DLT extension conjecture, which states as follows. Um, 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 uh, so, we, uh, so for simplicity, uh, we just assume that X is projective and Y is a simple normal coarsing divisor and B is some QFAT divisor. And uh, we suppose that uh, the support of this one is uh, simple normal coarsing and uh, and, uh, and the B is KRT. Moreover, we suppose that, uh, uh, f uh, we suppose that, uh, so for the line bundle here, is uh, numerical effective, and it's also equivalent uh, to some Q-effective divisor, such that uh, we have this uh, inclusion. Um, so therefore, the conjecture predicts that uh, we have uh, uh, predict uh, that uh, we have the uh, we have the subjectivity of this restriction map. Uh, so that's the DRT conjecture, and in the paper of uh, uh, and in the paper of uh, uh, in the paper of uh, the Mai Hui Kun Power, they uh, they proved that uh, uh, they proved that uh, the no managing conjecture and uh, plus the DRT extension conjecture will imply the abundance conjecture, and uh, uh, so. Uh, uh, so in fact, uh, uh, so in fact, uh, for the main motivation of our work uh, is in fact uh, uh, to study this conjecture. 
as for this conjecture in better for this conjecture in the paper of uh, uh, in the paper of uh, the Mai Hickenpon, they prove this conjecture under the same string that uh, y is smooth. That means that if y is smooth, uh, they could uh, prove the subjectivity of this. Uh, uh, they can prove the subjectivity of this restriction of this restriction map. For, and uh, for their proof, they use uh, uh, and uh, for their proof for uh, and uh, for their proof for they need really. The Osawa take over Gauche extension theorem well, with uh, control on its L2 norm. Uh, in the case of one y is smooth. Uh, uh, so, uh, so as I explained before, uh, to have a control on, on its L2 norm, what we know is that if, uh, what we know is that uh, if y is smooth, then in this case we can find an extension with a control on its L2 norm. And for the curvature condition, which we explained before, it's in fact corresponding to it's in fact. So for the curvature condition uh, here, the, for the curvature condition here, it's in fact corresponding to this inclusion. It's also explained in their paper. Um, but unfortunately, at the moment, for the orthotic extension theorem, uh, it's only proved in the case of one y is smooth. Uh, uh, so therefore, uh, so therefore, they, yeah, so therefore, in their paper, they could only prove the uh, they could only prove that DLT extension conjecture uh, under the same string set of y is smooth. Uh, so therefore, uh, so therefore, if we can generalize the Osawa-Dick extension theorem to the case one y is simple normal crossing, uh, then it will probably, yeah, then it will probably uh, imply the DLT extension conjecture. Uh, so that's the main motivation of our works. Uh, we would like to study the extension theorem in the case one y is smooth, one y is simple normal crossing. So now I would like to explain a little bit uh, um, our results. Uh, um, um, uh, so we recall that we have two questions. The first question is to ask whether, uh, the first question is to ask whether we can find an extension. The second question is to ask whether we can control its norm. Or not for the first question it's uh, for the first question it's in fact not very difficult uh, um, uh, so in fact in a paper of the Mai and the later which is uh, and the later it's uh, improved uh, um, a little bit uh, in our joint work uh, with uh, with uh, with Shinshi uh, Matsumura we can prove that uh, under the same string set, uh, uh, still under the uh, still under the same co curvature condition set, uh, we have this curvature condition. So in this case, uh, for any uh, section on the sub variety um, with uh, uh, with this L two norm condition, and also we should assume that it uh, satisfies a local L two extension condition, which will uh, which I will explain later. So in this case. Uh, we can find a holomorphic extension such that its L2 norm is bounded. But unfortunately, we cannot control its L2 norm by, uh, by this norm. We, cannot, uh, we don't have an effective control on its L2 norm. Um, so that's our theorem. Um, um, uh, so, uh, uh, so for the notion of uh, local L2, Homomorphic extension that just means that uh, at least locally we can find an extension of f such that its L2 norm is bounded. So in fact, there is a, uh, so in fact there is an example of Osawa uh, uh, who tells us that uh, uh, locally if this one is bounded, then we could not uh, uh, say in this case. Uh, uh, so in this case, uh, it's possible that we cannot find uh, an extension with a uh, control on its L2 norm. So therefore, for this local L2 extension um, condition, it's uh, always necessary. In the case of one, why is not a smooth. Um, so what we have proved is that uh, under these conditions, uh, then we can find the extension. On fact, uh, for, uh, on fact uh, for this result, it's uh, in fact very closely related uh, uh, to class injectivity theory. And, yeah. 
yeah, uh, so for this theory, it can be seen as a version of, uh, uh, it can be seen as a version of full injectivity theory. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's our main route. Uh, uh, so, so that's our route for the case of one. Uh, uh, so that's our route for the first question. In fact, for the first question, under this uh, uh, standard curvature condition, we can always find the extension. But for the second question, it's uh, in fact much more difficult. So that means that we would find the extension with an effective control on its L2 norm. For the second question, it's uh, much more difficult. Uh, um, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, as I have explained before, in the case one y is a simple normal crossing. If for this L2 norm is bounded, then by Lohmann Velas theory, we can also find that a holomorphic extension with uh, a control on L2 norm. But as I explained before, uh, for this L2 condition, uh, as I explained before, uh, this L2 condition, uh, it's very, uh, this L2 condition is very natural in algebra geometry. Um, but uh, for the finiteness of this uh, L2 norm, could not imply the finiteness of this one. For applications, uh, uh, the assumption of this one it's quite uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, uh, for this condition it's quite uh, restrictive. Uh, yeah, uh, in fact, there is one example. So, for example, once uh, y is uh, the union of two components uh, which uh, which intersect uh, completely, and we assume that uh, uh, for the value of f over the original point. Uh, yes, no managing. Say so in this case, uh, we know that uh, for this L2 norm is in fact equivalent uh, to the integral of this term. So therefore, in general, uh, so therefore, in general, uh, so therefore, in general, uh, if the integral of f of uh, if the integral of this term is finite, it could not uh, it could not imply that uh, for this integral is finite, because here we have a singular weight. Um, yeah, uh, so, uh, so, um, yeah, uh, so that's uh, um, so that's a remark about uh, the extension um, condition, um, and uh, I would also like to uh, cite an important example of Osawa, who tells us that in fact, in general, we cannot uh, hope. Uh, so that means that uh, for the Osawa's example, it in fact will imply that in general, if we just assume that uh, if we just assume that uh, the small f, uh, if we just assume that uh, the L2 norm of small f is finite, uh, in general we cannot find uh, an extension. So here uh, we just uh, take uh, a delta to be a small neighborhood of the original point in C2. And the y is the union of two components, and the phi r is the singular matrix, which is a PSH function. Then let a small f to be a holomorphic function over y, which equals to zero on one component and equals to z one on another component. So it's easy to check that. Uh, uh, so it's easy to check that its uh, L two norm is bounded. However. Uh, however, in fact, we cannot uh, find uh, an extension of small f with uh, control on its L2 norm. In fact, uh, if we can find uh, an extension with, uh, such that its L2 norm is bounded, uh, so therefore that means that uh, for this quotient, uh, uh, so that means that uh, uh, so that means that uh, for the quotient f divided by z1 minus z2, it's L2 bounded. So therefore, we know that for this one is a holomorphic function. This one is a holomorphic function. But as we explained, um, but by using the um, but by using the boundary condition, here we know that uh, its restriction on one component equals to zero, and another uh, and the restriction on another component is equals to one. So it's impossible because uh, they have a common point. So the example of Osawa uh, tells us that in fact, in general, if we just uh, assume that its L2 norm is bounded for the small f, we cannot find that uh, we cannot find it, uh, we cannot uh, find an extension. Also, as I explained before, if we added that, uh, if we added, if we added 
this L2 condition, it's uh, too strict uh, for applications. And if, uh, if you are not happy uh, with the singular metric, uh, um, so therefore in this case, we can just uh, take a smooth approximation of phi. If we can find uh, an extension with an effective control on its L2 norm, so therefore by letting F for, uh, so therefore by letting epsilon tends to zero, we know that uh, uh, we know that F for epsilon. Uh, so therefore we know that epsilon uh, tends to some holomorphic function, and its L two norm is bounded uh, by the constant of this one. So therefore it uh, implies uh, uh, so in uh, so in this case it uh, contradicts with uh, Oxford's example. And moreover, uh, and moreover, by tensoring with uh, some ample line bundle, it's easy to construct a, a global version of Oxford's example. So therefore, for so therefore, so therefore, so so therefore, so therefore, the example of Asawa tells us that in uh, the tells us that in general, if we want to prove for uh, if we want to prove for, if we want to prove for an effective estimate of the extension theorem, so in this case, uh, uh, for this L two condition, yes, um, uh, 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 so for this L two condition, it's not uh, sufficient. So we needed to uh, to find uh, some other conditions. Um, so therefore, uh, so therefore, in our paper, we first. Uh, Propose the following conjecture um, as follows: uh, uh, We still in the setting that uh, x is projective and uh, y is uh, a simple normal coefficient divisor. We suppose always that uh, the line bundle satisfies this curvature condition, which we is very natural in algebraic geometry. Saying so this case, uh, um, saying so this case, we first fix uh, a small neighborhood of the singular locus of y. Um, uh, so in the case of one, uh, so in the case uh, one y is a simple normal coefficient. So for the singular locus of co-dimension two, so it's a neighborhood of. Uh, uh, so uh, so for this one, it's a neighborhood of uh, some co-dimension two sub variety. And uh, in this case, uh, um, and in this case, uh, we suppose that a uh, small f uh, is a holomorphic section over the sub variety with uh, its uh, standard L2 condition. And moreover, we assume that it, uh, um, and moreover, we assume that uh, at least uh, we can extend it locally. On, um, on some small open set, we can extend it. Um, saying in this case, uh, we conjecture that, uh, uh, saying in this case, we conjecture that if for this, uh, uh, if for the right hand side of this of this inequality is finite, then in this case uh, we can control the L2 norm of the extension, because uh, uh, because uh, by using the result of the MAI, uh, we know that we can always find uh, an extension, but uh, we don't uh, have uh, an effective estimate on its L2 norm. Uh, so here we propose the following condition that uh, if the right hand side is finite. So in this case, we can control its L2 norm um, by some uniform constant uh, time, um, times this one plus this term. So I would like to explain a little bit uh, the condition here. Uh, since V singular is a, uh, since V singular is a neighborhood of the singular locus of Y, so therefore we know that, uh, so therefore we know that, uh, uh, so therefore we know that uh, for Y minus V singular, it's a smooth set, so therefore, as we explained before, uh, so as uh, so therefore, as we explained the, the before, uh, the finiteness of this one, uh, as we explained the, the before, the L two norm of this one over y minus v singular is equivalent uh, uh, to this L two norm. Uh, so therefore, for this L two norm, uh, is automatically bounded. Uh, but here, uh, uh, but here we need to add. Uh, Another term uh, is that uh, uh, for the part which is close to the singular locus, we need to add this L1 condition. 
So here, as we explained before, uh, for the quotient here, it takes uh, values uh, in ky plus, uh, uh, it takes uh, values in ky plus l. So here for the L1 norm here is the L1 norm with respect to some smooth uh, uh, metric on KY and the L. And, uh, but uh, we need to uh, um, predict it is, uh, with uh, the potential of uh, the singular metric uh, HL. Uh, so for this one, it's in fact a uh, L1 condition. Uh, so here, uh, so here we propose the, the conjecture. Uh, so for the our conjecture, we state that uh, if for uh, if for uh, if for, for this small f for yes locally uh, if for this small f for uh, yes l one close uh, to the singular locus. Uh, say in this case, uh, uh, say in this case, uh, we conjecture that we can find uh, an extension with an effective control on its l two norm. So that's our main conjecture, um, and uh, I would uh, uh, and I would like to remark that uh, uh, if we can prove this conjecture, uh, if we can prove this conjecture, so probably uh, so probably by using the same argument uh, of uh, uh, by using the. Same reason is that. Uh, uh, the reason, uh, the reason is that in their proof uh, for this term, it's quite explicitly. Uh, so for this uh, term, it's very explicit. Uh, since uh, for their proof, they used uh, uh, they used uh, they used the uh, induction um, of orthotic Gauss extension. Uh, so for this term, it's uh, very explicit, and we can check that for this term is uh, for this term is always bounded. We oui, yes, there is. Okay, uh, so uh, so that's the first remark is that uh, for this conjecture, it will probably implies the conjecture of DLT conjecture. And uh, um, um, and uh, so for applications, uh, um, yeah. So you have questions? Okay. Uh, uh, and um, and uh, and uh, so for applications. Uh, um, and also for applications, uh, we can suppose in the beginning that uh, phi L has analytic singularity. Uh, so in our paper, we cannot uh, totally, uh, so in our paper, we could not approve this conjecture uh, in full generality. Um, and, uh, and, and even we don't know if this conjecture is true or false. Uh, um, may, uh, maybe we can find, a, uh, maybe we can find a some counter example. Um, of this one, it's also possible. Um, um, so in our paper, we could only prove a weak version of this conjecture. Um, so here is our statement. Uh, uh, we assume that for the metric on HL, uh, so phi L is the weight of the, uh, for, for, phi L, uh, for phi L is the weight of the metric. That means that uh, for the metric HL is just equals to uh, E, uh, yes, uh, uh, so for the metric uh, HL is locally equals to E uh, potential of uh, minus phi L. Um, we suppose that uh, for the weight of the metric, uh, it's of the following type, it's uh, equals to the log of uh, S. So S is a holomorphic function um, on the neighborhood of uh, the singular locus of Y. V singular is the singular locus of uh, uh, v singular is the neighborhood of the singular locus of, of, of Y. We suppose that phi L is locally of the form uh, uh, log S square plus synchronic term and plus tau L, where tau L is a bounded function such, um, and uh, we suppose that for the curvature here is in fact uh, uh, is in fact a larger sense uh, sense a straight positive constant uh, times the conic metric associate uh, uh, associate uh, to this uh, um, Q divisor. Say in this case, uh, uh, say in this case, uh, uh, say in this case, we can prove our conjecture. I mean that uh, under assumption that uh, uh, phi L is of in uh, yeah, uh, the assumption that the phi L is uh, of this type, and uh, so for the S here, it can be uh, as an 
an arbitrary holomorphic function on V singular. Say in this case, uh, um, say in this case, uh, we can prove that uh, we can find an, an extension with a control on L, its L2 norm. And for the constant C here, it in fact depends on the geometry of the conic matrix on V singular locus. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's our statement. Uh, so that's our statement. Uh, um, uh, now I would like to explain a little bit of the idea of the proof of our theorem. Um, so to begin with, uh, uh, so to begin with, uh, so our proof is lower. Uh, so our proof is uh, in fact relies. Uh, uh, it uh, relies uh, on an argument of Sue Bobedson. Uh, here in our paper, we just uh, improve the little bit. Um, uh, there are a lot. Uh, so we suppose that X is a projective manifold uh, that, uh, and uh, we, we always uh, have this curvature condition. For the line bundle, we have always this curvature condition. And the letter C to be a smooth N1 form with values in L. Um, Say so in this case, so we know that uh, we can define the Hodge star operator, which is, uh, yeah. Uh, so here we fix a color matrix, a smooth color matrix omega x uh, on x. So here we can talk about the Hodge star operator, which sends n one form to n minus one serial form. Uh, then, um, uh, then, uh, then in this case, uh, we can prove that, uh, say in this case, we can prove that, uh, um, um, so therefore, we know that, uh, so therefore, we know that uh, for this part, uh, it's uh, n minus one, n minus one form. So for the integral over y is well defined. So, so the lemma of SU um, details us that uh, for this uh, details us that uh, the integral of this n minus one n minus one form over y can be controlled um, can be controlled by the um, can be controlled by the uh, can be controlled by the L two norm of its derivative over the total space x. Um, so for this one, it's uh, in fact. Uh, uh, so for this one, it's in fact uh, uh, quite a uh, strong result. Uh, that means that uh, that means that uh, its L two norm on the boundary can be controlled uh, by its H one norm over x. So for the boundary here is of co-dimension. Uh, so for the boundary here is uh, of 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 of, 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 of uh, complex co-dimension one. So for this route, it's quite a, a strong route. Uh, so for the proof of this route, uh, in fact, uh, uh, in fact, uh, it's in fact a, a consequence of uh, uh, Intonsius uh, inequality. We just uh, put a uh, uh, C to be this n minus one n minus one form. Uh, say in this case, uh, uh, say the, say the, in this case, uh, we have a direct uh, calculator, and the DD bar of this one can be written. As the sum of uh, these two terms. Now, in order now uh, now now uh, now in order to prove this inequality, uh, we calculate uh, we uh, we calculate uh, C wedge with the dd bar of uh, log sy. Um, uh, so for this integral, uh, so for this the integral, the residual part of uh, of this integral. Uh, gives the right hand side. Uh, so for the integral, uh, so for the residual part, it gives uh, uh, it uh, it uh, it gives the left hand side of this inequality. And uh, by using Stokes, uh, and by using Stokes and the curvature condition, um, and uh, by using and also by using this equality, uh, we can prove that. Uh, uh, and uh, we can prove that uh, uh, for the rest part, it uh, controlled. By the L two norm of of this part. Uh, so uh, so for this one, it's the lemma of uh, Sue. Um, uh, so uh, so now uh, so now before explain. Uh, so now by using this lemma, we can prove our results. Uh, uh, 
Um, so for simplicity, um, I would like to first explain a little bit uh, the proof in the case one, why is smooth? Um, uh, yeah, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, 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 so here, uh, so here we just assume that uh, y is simple normal crossing. Uh, so in this case, we just uh, take a, uh, a smooth N1 form with values in L. So now by using the Hodge decomposition, C can be decomposed as uh, uh, C1 plus C2, where C1 is debug closed and uh, C2 is orthogonal to the space of uh, debug closed space. And by using our router, we already know that we can find a some holomorphic extension. So in particular, for the debug of the quotient, it's uh, Current supported in Y. Now we can uh, now we can in, uh, now in this case uh, we can calculate its product with C. Um, as C two is D bar star closed for this one, uh, for this one is D bar closed. Uh, even in the current case, we can still prove that uh, its uh, its product with C two equals to zero by 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 approximation. So therefore, we know that for this integral, it's in fact equals to this one, and uh, and uh, and uh, since it's uh, and, uh, and uh, since for this one it's uh, supported in y uh, by direct calculator, we know that it's equals to this term. So until this step, so until this step, we know that uh, so until this step, uh, y can be simple normal crossing. Um, now here we assume that. Uh, why is smooth? Uh, in the smooth case, uh, in the smooth case, uh, let us uh, let us see uh, how we can prove the orthogonal Hodge extension theorem. Um, in the smooth case, we know that uh, uh, in the smooth case uh, we know that uh, for this uh, integral uh, by using this equality, it's equals this integral is equal to this integral, and by using Cauchy inequality, we know that uh, for this integral is controlled by the product of the L2 norm of F times this term. As we explained before, if Y is smooth, then in this case, uh, for this L2 norm is equivalent to the L2 norm of uh, small f with respect to smooth matrix. So therefore, in the case one, Y is smooth, for this term is finite. And uh, for the second term here, by using the lemma of SU, uh, we know that uh, for for the second term here, it's in fact uh, controlled by this term. It's controlled by this term, and uh, we recall that uh, for C one is debug closed, and uh, so for the second term, it's controlled by this term, and uh, um, and uh, by using the Hodge decomposition, we know that uh, C one um, by construction is debug closed, so we don't have this term, so therefore. We know that uh, for this integral is controlled uh, by a term which depends on small f, which is finite, times uh, uh, times uh, the L2 norm of uh, the bar stack C. Uh, so therefore, by uh, so therefore, uh, so therefore, by using read the representation theorem in functional analysis, we know that uh, we can find some mu such that uh, we have this e uh, we have this equality for any smooth C. And also the L2 norm of mu is controlled by this term, which is a finite one y is smooth. By using this equality, we know that uh, uh, for this equality, since this equality is holds uh, for any C, so therefore we know that we have this equality. Uh, in particular, we know that uh, mu times Sy is uh, holomorphic. Since uh, for this one, it's equals to zero, Outside the uh, y, so therefore we know that uh, we know that uh, for the product it's holomorphic, and it's uh, easy to check locally that uh, uh, in this case by by, um, by this equality we know that uh, f just extends uh, the small f, and uh, moreover by using this L two condition we know that uh, the L two norm of uh, f theta is also controlled by this term, so that's finished the proof of. of uh, so that's the finished proof. Uh, so that's the finished proof of our 
uh, of uh, authentic voice extension theorem in the case so one why is smooth uh, um, so in fact uh, for this one it can be seen as a direct consequence of uh, Inton Seuss uh, uh, of Inton Seuss equality. Um, now the main difficulty as we explained before is that in the case of one y is not a smooth uh, um, um, one y is not a smooth for inter uh, for this integral yet uh, it uh, might be divergent. Um, uh, so in this case, uh, uh, so in this case, uh, how we can prove our uh, how we can prove our result? Uh, uh, still, um, uh, uh, so in this case, uh, how can we prove our result? Uh, we still assume that. Uh, um, uh, uh, so for most part, uh, it will be the same um, as the smooth case. Uh, uh, as before, we just take uh, C to be a smooth uh, and uh, to be a smooth and one form with values in L. Um, but here we just assume that it's supported uh, outside uh, V singular. We recall that V singular is a small. Uh, we recall that V singular is a, a small neighborhood of the singular locus of Y. Singular locus of Y is of co-dimension two. Mm, so it's a neighborhood of uh, some sub variety of code main two. We suppose that C is supported in uh, is supported uh, uh, in this set, uh, and uh, now we still consider the Hodge decomposition of C. And uh, the key point here is that in this case uh, we can prove that uh, for this integral is controlled by some constant which depends on f, which depends on small f times uh, this integral for the constant uh, cf here it's uh, in fact just equals to the right hand side of our uh, of our result for the uh, for the cf it's in fact equals to the l2 norm of f outside the v singular plus the l1 norm on v uh, so for this one it's the uh, for so for this one it's the cf we can in fact prove that uh, uh, we can in fact prove that uh, we can in fact prove that uh, for this integral it's controlled by CF times this term. We will prove this integral later. Um, uh, so we suppose at the moment that uh, uh, we have this inequality. So in this case, I would like to conclude. Um, uh, if we have this inequality, uh, so by using the same argument as before, we know that we can find some mu such that we have this equality uh, for any C who's supported, uh, uh, which is supported uh, outside of V singular. And the L2 norm of mu is controlled by CF. By using this equality, uh, since the C is only supported outside of V singular, so therefore this equality implies only that we have this equality uh, outside of V singular. So therefore, we know that mu times S y uh, is in fact a holomorphic uh, only outside of V singular, and it uh, extends F outside of V singular. Um, but as uh, we have already ex uh, um, but as uh, we have already emphasized uh, several times, uh, uh, since uh, y is uh, uh, since uh, y is uh, simple normal causing, so therefore the singular locus is of co-dimension two. Uh, so therefore, by hard course, uh, we know that. Uh, so therefore, by hard course, we know that uh, for this holomorphic uh, section can be extended uh, to be the holomorphic section on the total space, uh, and with its uh, effective control on its uh, L two norm. So let's uh, finish the proof of our theorem. Um, uh, so now, uh, so now to finish the proof, uh, the only point missing is that uh, we need to prove this inequality we need to prove this inequality. In the, uh, in, uh, in the case one, y is smooth, uh, it's very easy to prove. But in the case one, y is not a smooth uh, for this inequality, it's quite uh, difficult. Uh, and we don't know whether it's uh, true or false in general. Um, so here we, uh, um, um, so here, um, um, so here we need to, uh, so, uh, so here, uh, so here to prove, uh, so here to prove this inequality, we can only prove this inequality under the assumption that, uh, under the assumption that, uh, 
for the matrix on L, it satisfies this condition. If the matrix satisfies this condition, then in this case, we can prove this incorrectly. So for the proof, it's as follows. Uh, so for the proof is uh, as follows. Uh, um, so for the proof as follows, uh, as we explained before, um, we know that uh, for this product, uh, it's equals to uh, it's equals to the integral of uh, of this quotient of wedge star c one over y. Now we split uh, this integral by two parts. One part is the integral outside the v singular. So therefore, in this case, uh, uh, so therefore, in this case, uh, um, and uh, for another term. It's close to the singular locus of y. As we explained before, for the, for the first part, uh, uh, for the first part, uh, since y is smooth uh, on, on this part, uh, we can control as in the, uh, we can control it uh, as in the case one y is smooth. That means that for this integral, it's controlled by, um, by this L2 norm, which is bounded times this term. So for this part, it's essentially the same as the smooth case. Uh, however, um, however, uh, for the second term here, however, for the second term here, uh, as we explained before, the L2 norm of this one over the singular, uh, near the singular locus of Y is not finite. So in this case, how we can control it? Uh, um, um, in order to control this term, we recall that C1, uh, well, we recall that uh, by our construction, C uh, is a smooth form which is supported uh, outside the uh, V singular. So therefore, we know that uh, as C equals to C1 plus C2, so therefore we know that C1 is equals to minus C2 on the neighbor, uh, in a neighborhood of, uh, of, of the singular locus of Y. As before, we know um, by the decomposition of Hodge, um, by the Hodge decomposition, we know that C1 is D bar closed, C2 is D bar star closed. So therefore, we know that uh, C1 is D bar closed and the D bar uh, star closed on this open set. That means that, uh, uh, so that means that uh, for C1 here, it's in fact a harmonic with respect to the, uh, it's in fact harmonic with respect to the matrix uh, uh, it's in fact a harmonic with respect to the matrix of uh, HL and the conic matrix. It's in fact, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's in fact harmonic. Um, by using the harmonicity of C1, we can prove that we have this inequality. That means that it's C0 norm of C1 is in fact controlled by the L2 norm of C1. Um, I would like to explain that uh, um, for this inequality, we can only prove it uh, in the case. Uh, uh, we can only prove it in the case one. Uh, in, uh, in case uh, one, the matrix of uh, HL uh, is of the type uh, is of the type uh, log S square uh, plus uh, synchronic part um, and uh, plus a bounded part. We can. Uh, 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 if the singularity of uh, or if the singularity of H L, uh, if the singularity of H L is of arbitrary singularity, uh, uh, so at least for us uh, we cannot prove this uh, inequality. So to prove this inequality, we really need the assumption on the type of the singularity of H L. And uh, for the second inequality. Um, and uh, the and uh, for the second equality, it's in fact just a consequence of 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 uh, for the second equality, it's in fact just a consequence of Buchner inequality. Um, because we uh, because we uh, because uh, because we uh, because, uh, because we assume that uh, for the curvature of H L is larger than some constant uh, times uh, the conic matrix on V singular. So therefore, we have the second inequality. So therefore, we know that uh, for the C0 norm of C1 is in fact controlled by this term. So therefore, uh, 
uh, so therefore, uh, so therefore, once we evaluate this integral, it can be controlled by this L2 norm times the C0 norm, and which is controlled by the, when the, which is controlled by, by this term. So therefore, uh, so therefore we have this, you know, we have this control, uh, you know, the single locus of Y, and also we have this control outside of the single locus of Y. So, uh, so by putting these two terms together, uh, we obtain this inequality. And so that's finished the proof of our loss. Okay, uh, thank you. So thank you, thank you for, for the talk. Are there any questions? So it seems that the DLT extension conjecture is a purely uh, qualitative uh, statement. So yes, uh, uh, so yeah, so uh, so at least, uh, uh, yeah, uh, so at least, uh, uh, so at least, uh, I think that uh, even in the smooth case, uh, uh, so at, uh, even in the smooth case, uh, so at the moment, uh, the only method uh, to prove it, uh, uh, we need. Uh, to have an effective estimator. So that's the only method at the moment. So, uh, so, uh, so, so, therefore, uh, so, therefore, uh, so, therefore, uh, so, therefore, if we want to prove the DLT conjecture by using the, the me, me, by, using, by using the method of the Michigan power, uh, we expect that we can have a same effective estimator. But, um, but uh, but but it seems that it's uh, it's quite difficult. I see. Yeah. Um. Uh, um. But I think that. Uh, um. Um. Yeah. Um. But I think that. Uh, uh, so I, so as I explained before. Um. Uh. The example of Osawa. Uh. The example of Osawa tells us that uh, in fact uh, in general. Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, in general, uh, the L2 norm condition on the small f uh, uh, is not uh, sufficient for us. So, we, uh, so in fact, uh, for the difficulty here is in fact uh, to find the uh, same conditions uh, um, on the small f um, uh, such that we can uh, such that uh, such that uh, we can find that the L2 extension. But uh, in this case, it uh, seems that it's quite uh, difficult to find uh, a right condition on the um, on the control or uh, on the control of the small f. Mm -hmm. okay, so so uh, statement, yeah. Mm. So it's a statement that yeah. you prove with the uh, form of the particular case of uh, your conjecture uh, already implies mm. some. Um, so extension theorem, which is stronger than uh, PLT, PLT singularities. Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, uh, in, uh, in fact, in, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, in fact, in the beginning, uh, in fact, in the beginning, we tried to find the same applications, uh, um, um, but uh, but uh, but uh, at the moment uh, we could uh, but at the moment uh, we don't have uh, we don't uh, have. The, we don't uh, find uh, the applications uh, in algebra geometry. Uh, yeah, uh, in fact, uh, we have tried a little bit uh, in the case. Uh, uh, we have uh, tried, in fact, tried a little bit uh, in the case. Uh, uh, we, yeah, we, in fact, we have tried a little bit uh, to prove that uh, for the inverse of of of, of, of Pulkovich general, it also holds uh, in the case uh, one fiber is uh, simple normal crossing. Um, but uh, there is uh, some difficulties uh, for, for us. Yeah. So, uh, so for the main problem is that. Uh, uh, so for the main problem is that. Uh, uh, so for the main problem is that. Uh, so for the main problem is that. Uh, uh, so for the main problem is as follows. Uh, in fact, if we want to prove the DRT conjecture, uh, if we want to prove that, that if we want to prove the DRT extension conjecture. 
uh, uh, in the case one, uh, in the case uh, one y is of simple normal causing. Um, so in fact, uh, uh, so for the, the singularity of phi y, in fact, uh, we can just assume that uh, it's of this type. Uh, it's of the type, uh, it's of the type uh, log, uh, it's of the type log s square plus uh, synchronic term. And, uh, um, um, but in, um, but in fact, by construction, um, but in fact, by construction, in fact, we cannot control the geometric, uh, in fact, we cannot uh, control the geometric, uh, uh, we cannot uh, control the geometric uh, of, uh, we cannot uh, control the geometric uh, uh, of this conic matrix. Uh, that means, uh, that means, uh, that means that, uh, uh, that uh, means that uh, we can assume that uh, for the phi error, it's equals to uh, it's equals to, uh, uh, so for the uh, so for the phi error here it's equals to the half uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, of, uh, of uh, log s square, where s is uh, only a holomorphic uh, function. Um, but uh, for the singularity of it, uh, uh, but uh, for the zero locus uh, of this holomorphic section, uh, it might be very complicated. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, for our theorem, it really depends uh, on the singularity of, of this term. So for our theorem, it's uh, yeah. So for the our theorem, it seems it seems sufficient. Uh, if we can prove our theorem. Uh, for this type of singularity, and uh, for the constant, uh, um, and if we can prove for our theorem for this type of singularity, and also for the constant, it's in the it's independent of the geometry, it's independent of the geometry of the uh, of the conic matrix. So in this case, uh, we can prove for our conjecture. Mm -hmm. So so yeah so uh, so uh, uh, so that's a little bit difficult uh, uh, for the constant here. It, uh, for the constant, uh, uh, for our proof, it really depends on the geometric of the conic matrix. Mm -hmm. so thank you. Yeah. So are there more questions? So there's a um, problem on chat. So Julio asked, uh, what happens if X is assumed only to be a killer? Uh, do you expect also that the DOT conjecture holds? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, uh, so I think that, uh, uh, so I think that, uh, so even in the smooth case, uh, it's a larger conjecture. <laughs> So, uh, so, 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 for example, uh, so for example, so for the PRT, uh, so for example, uh, for the paper of the Mai Power and uh, Haken, um, they proved the DRT conjecture in the case of one y is uh, smooth. Uh, so for their proof, uh, they use uh, they use essentially the proof uh, of Su uh, Su and the Power in the case. Uh, uh, for the invariance of blue uh, in the projective case. Uh, so even in the case, uh, so in, even in the case uh, one family is color, so for, uh, so for the invariance of blue general, it's uh, totally open. Yeah, we just know that if the section it, uh, has some mild singularity, then in this case, uh, Navina, he can prove the extension, but in general, if the um, but in general, if for, for the section we want to extend, it, it's quite singular, so it's quite uh, large, open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, what I mean is that uh, what I mean is that uh, if x is only a color, uh, so in this case for the DRT, uh, can you try even for the PRT, it's uh, it's largely open. But uh, for our result. Um, but uh, for our result, uh, um, but uh, for our result, uh, I think that uh, we can quite easy to generalize to, to the color case. Um, but uh, for the DRT conjecture, it's, uh, it's quite difficult to generalize to the color case. Okay, thank you. Um, so more, more questions?
So if there is no more question, that's thanks uh, Junyan Chao again. So thank you for the nice talk. Yeah, thanks for the invitation.